தோழர்களே நண்பர்களே வணக்கம் எனக்கு தமிழ்ல பேசுறதுக்கு கொஞ்சம் கஷ்டம் இருக்கு மன்னிக்க நான் ஆங்கிலத்துல பேச போறேன் டியர் பிரதர்ஸ் அண்ட் சிஸ்டர்ஸ் ஐ எம் வெரி ஹாப்பி டு பி ஹியர் at this meeting organized by the kadalur district committee of the communist party of india marxism this meeting is being held to defend the right to livelihood and the right to dissent and this meeting also is an occasion for the release of the history of the communist movement of kadalu and on this occasion i'd like to convey my warm greetings to all those veteran comrades who were felicitated here who have contributed to the development of the communist party and movement in kadalur for more than 50 years the history of the communist movement in kadalur is part of the rich history of the communist movement in india a history which is replete with a saga of sacrifice and struggle by tens of thousands of communists and this saga of struggle and sacrifice began in the freedom struggle when communists were in the forefront in organizing the working class and the peasantry to join the freedom struggle and tens of thousands of communist activists and leaders were put in prison many were martyred in the fight for freedom the communist party and the communist movement fought not only for political independence from the british it led the fight against feudalism against feudal landlordism it led the fight against social and caste oppression and it led the fight for the emancipation of the working class and in these struggles both before independence and after independence thousands of communist party members and activists laid down their lives became martyrs and it is to the to the sacrifice and the blood shed by these martyrs that our movement grew and developed into a major force in the country here in kadalur jail communist prisoners were there including in the fight for land like the telangana struggle or the tibaga struggle in bengal or the punapra vailar struggle in kerala the communist party was in the forefront in the fight against imperialism and feudalism here in kadalur today we saw the mother of the martyr kumar anandan who was killed in the year 1999 in every part of india in every part of tamil nadu you will find communist martyrs who laid down their lives because they fought against evils in society who fought against landlordism who fought for the rights of the oppressed sections so this is the rich history of the communist party but today in india we have in power in delhi 
a political force, the Bharti Janta Party, and its controller, the Rashtra Swayam Sevak Sangh, who had no role whatsoever in the freedom struggle. They did not participate in the independence struggle because for them the enemy was not British rule. For them the enemies were the Muslims. So they did not want to join the freedom struggle. Our party, the CPIM, when we formed this party in 1964, our topmost leaders there were nine members of the Politburo. A.K. Gopalan, E.M.S. Nambudri Pat, P. Ramamurthy, Harkishan Singh Surji, Jyoti Basu, P. Sundaraya. All of them, if you take those nine leaders, together they spent 34 years in jail. In the freedom struggle and after independence also. You cannot find one RSS leader of that generation who even stepped into prison for even one day because they were going against the freedom struggle. And they are the ones ruling the country today who claim to be great nationalists. Their nationalism is communal nationalism. It is Hindu nationalism. It is not a nationalism which is Indian nationalism. And such are the rulers today who are deciding the lives of the citizens of this country. Today, every fundamental right given to the citizens of India under the constitution is under attack by the Modi government. The right of freedom of expression that is being suppressed all over the country in various ways. Those who speak out against the communal forces, those who speak out against the reactionary <coughs> Hindutva ideology, they are branded as anti-national and cases are filed against them of sedition. Sedition means you are waging war against the state and government. It is a law brought by the British which is being used today against those who express dissent, who oppose any aspect of the Modi government's policies. Under the Modi rule, the RSS slogan is one nation, one religion, one culture and one leader. Anybody who differs in this, if you dress differently, if your religion is not the officially sanctioned religion, if you eat different type of food, you dress differently, you think differently, then you are branded as anti-Indian and anti-national. And today we are having an authoritarian state in which the fundamental rights and liberties of citizens are under attack. In the three months since the BJP has come back to power, all the attacks on these fundamental rights have got intensified. There are places in India today where when a Muslim is identified, mobs surround him and say you have to shout Jai Shri Ram, otherwise they are beaten. This has happened in Jharkhand, this has happened in West Bengal and other places. Today, the government has, with the stroke of a pen, abolished a state in India. 
According to the constitution, India is a union of states. But in parliament, the BJP has abolished one state, Jammu and Kashmir. We were 29 states of the union. Today we have become 28 states. And why is this so? Because Jammu and Kashmir is the only state which is a Muslim majority state in our country. The people of Kashmir decided to join India, not Pakistan. When they joined, the leadership of India assured them that their way of life, their culture will be protected. They will be given autonomy. That is why Article 370 was included in the Constitution by the Constituent Assembly of India. Today, the state has been abolished. Article 370 has been abolished. And Jammu and Kashmir has been put directly under central rule. This is the type of assault on democracy, on federalism and secularism which is the hallmark of the BJP RSS government at the center. It is by such divisive and communal politics that this BJP government is also presiding over an economic regime in which the livelihood of the people are being attacked. Everyone knows that India's economic situation has deteriorated. There's a slowdown in the economy, in every sector. Lacks of jobs are being lost, for instance, in the automobile industry because of the slowdown. The farmers are unable to earn a decent livelihood through farming. And unemployment is now reached its highest level in the last 45 years, according to the government's own statistics. So this big attack on the people's livelihood is taking place at a time when all the big corporates and big business houses are getting a bonanza. They are making super profits due to the Modi government's policies. So on one hand, there is an attack on the fundamental rights and civil liberties of the citizens. And on the other, there is this attack on their economic rights, on their livelihood. And therefore we have to unite all the forces all the secular democratic forces to face these attacks and to rebuff these attacks in this fight against the Modi government's policies, its communal agenda and its anti-people policies. The working class is taking the lead. Just in the last five days, defense production employees of all the defense production factories, all the ordnance factories began a strike for one month, they declared. All the unions, all the federations jointly gave the strike call. That after five days now, the government has said, we will set up a committee to discuss your demands because they are trying to privatize all the defense production units. In the railways also, they have started to privatize. Strikes have taken place in Varanasi. There's a factory in Modi's own constituency, railway coach factory. Another one in Rai Bareli. Another one in Punjab. The workers immediately, when they said we are going to corporatize these railway units, the workers went on strike. So, 
the fight will be initiated and led, I am sure, by the working class and all other sections of the working people will also join these struggles. And there will be a united fight put by the working class, the peasantry, the public sector employees and all other working people. So we have to build this unity. And the communists will be in the lead. We will take the lead in both the defense of fundamental rights and civil liberties. All over the country today, we are raising the voice for the Kashmiri people. Because we know if they can attack the people of Kashmir in this way, they can attack the people of any other state in this manner. In Tamil Nadu, where always there has been a strong movement for the defense of the rights of the states, for states' autonomy, we must realize that what they have done in Jammu and Kashmir is a threat to all the states of India, to the federal principle. So the fight for defense of federalism, for secularism, for democracy and for the defense of livelihood, all these struggles must be brought together. And I'm sure in the coming days, such movements and struggles will develop. The opposition is weak in parliament today. But the real opposition will come not in parliament, but from the people. And it is our job to mobilize all sections of people to fight against the danger of this Hindutva authoritarian government. Thank you very much.